It was you, Kristen, who shot JR. Hey, get in here. Dallas is about to start. Welcome to the Ewing Barbecue, where we will post bail for you, but only if we can raise the funds. My name is Mary. And I'm Sarah. I'm Josh. I'm Melanie. What's up, y'all? What's, What's up? Yay! What's up, y'all? I okay. guess what I'm drinking tonight. Um, you're drinking a White Claw. Yeah. No. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> no. A truly. <laughs> uh, <sighs> Urban. For a minute, I thought it was water until you turned it. <laughs> this colored water. It's yeah. alcohol. Yeah. It's alcohol flavored no, water. Like, when you turn, when you turn the the decanter like this way, it looked clear for a second until he turned it around. I was oh, like, well, it is actually water because the word whiskey comes from the Gaelic word uskabeha, which means water of life in Gaelic. So oh, look, I learned, I learned some more, you know. And that's our uh, lang- that's our language portion of the evening, folks. There you go. <laughs> Don't say we didn't teach you nothing. Right. <laughs> this is one of my favorite episodes, just so y'all know. Yes. Uh, it's a good one. Oh, it's it's the the big one. The big one. The big one. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's still uh, to this day, like, still the number three most watched episode of all time, correct? Thank you. Right. Yeah. But I, I said I was going to do this, and I just want to give a brief understanding to people what ratings and shares are all yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd I want to do this. I did post a picture on our Instagram, just a, a dumbed down picture, so it would be easy to understand. But ratings are percentages of all TV households in the country. Okay. Now, share, not the singer, um, shares are percentages of the households or viewers actually watching TV at the time. So it's. Ratings are every TV household in the country. Shares are the number of TVs turned on. And they so, knew this by Nielsen ratings, right? Nielsen yeah. ratings. So because some people were Nielsen households. I always right. wished I was one of those. A good example is uh, you have a thousand homes with TVs. Five hundred of them are on. One hundred are tuned into a particular show. So that would be a share of twenty percent. Because 100, okay, 100 gotcha. of 500. But just multiply that into the millions and you see what you're getting at. So this episode had more than 83 million Americans watching. Over 300, oh. over wow. 300 million viewers worldwide. 76% of all television sets in the United States were tuned into the show. So that's a 76 share. At the same time. Bananas. At the, at the same time. And the rating itself was... And that bested the 51.1 rating and 71 share earned uh, four years earlier for the final part of the miniseries Roots. But the highest episode, uh, highest rated thing uh, episode of a show uh, was The Fugitive in 1967 before that. And this record was held until MASH broke it in 1983, February 28th, with a 60.2 rating. That was their finale, right? Yeah. And this episode actually is the only one in the top that is a regular episode of of a series and not a series finale or a special or a Mm -hmm. miniseries or movie of the week or anything like that. so. So, Josh, as of right now in the year 2021... Just as a, as a for instance here, could you tell me what a 0.88 rating in the 18 to 49 demographic means? I'd have to get back to you on that because I just I went and just did a, or whatever. Yeah, I'd have to do math and well, it's, um, it's five and or 5.15 million viewers in live and same day viewing. Okay, yeah, it's gotten more complicated with when they figure in same day viewing and three day out and seven day out with the DVRs and everything. Oh, but, I forgot because. That. Yeah, because we have DVRs and streaming and, you know, people can watch it at different times. It's really, it's kind of hard to gauge like what that final tally is, but even 5 million viewers it now is yeah. significant because of all the content there is out there. Right. Exactly. <laughs> this. So what I gave you was just a simplistic version going back to 
when there were three networks and mm-hmm. that's all you had. When we so. used to record on VHS tapes, the episodes we wanted to watch again. <laughs> and if, now, you were, if you were rich enough to have a VCR in 1980, a lot oh, of people yeah. went to the uh, 82, 83, 84. I didn't, we didn't get one until Christmas 85. I think uh, I was like 83 or 84 because I remember I was like five. So yeah, like 83 maybe. And I remember sitting watching episodes and recording them on the VCR while I was sitting there and pausing during commercials. That was smart. I didn't think about it. I only did that did for that a later. couple of episodes. And then, and then I've dumped them once all the VHS tapes, once the yeah, DVDs too. came out. So yeah. it was, but um, that is just a thing of ratings and uh, housekeeping. I just have a thank you to Jason C for once again, donating to the bourbon fund. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. So today we're recording on May 18th, which is Priscilla Pointer's 97th birthday, the oldest living cast member. Yes. And late news today, we should give uh, condolences to Josh Henderson and his family uh, because his his beloved Sadie uh, passed away today. Who is his dog? Yes, his dog. Yes. And we've posted that up and... um, yeah, a little bulldog. But all the pictures had a big bulldog smile on his face or her face. Yeah, and I I got to meet her in 2015 when I was down visiting, and just an infectious personality of a fur dog. And so they're a little, you know, taken aback. So we'll just drink one. Yeah, we'll raise a toast to Sadie. We'll raise a toast. I'm drinking water right now, so I'll change this in a minute. But I just. Mm. You got to cleanse the palate every once in a while. But. Yeah. And um, All Rise, which Josh Henderson was on, has officially been canceled. Uh, really? By, by CBS, yes, after two seasons. Hmm. So that's, that's, that's my housekeeping. Okay, tonight we are talking about dun, 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 season four, episode four, Who Done It? She could have tried any time she wanted to. The gun was right there in the closet. Well, she had to be out of her mind or drunk. I can post that 100000 myself. Sit down, Bobby. Don't you forget that woman shot your brother. She has a right to legal counsel, JR. Not paid by us, she doesn't. I wanted to kill him, Cliff. So did half the people in Dallas. Not raising money for Sue Ellen's bail? What? Now, don't tell me you didn't know she's out. We just have to be more careful. JR. What are you doing here? Don't come any closer. I won't call the police. Don't you come any closer. It is written by Lorraine, I think it's Dupre. It's either Des Prez, which I don't think is a thing. I think it's Dupre. If anybody knows differently how to pronounce that. It sounds kind of like French, Dupre. 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 Uh, Directed by Leonard Katzman and aired November 21st, 1980. Which is the birthday of one Deborah Shelton. Hmm. Oh, just the, the day. I was thinking 19. I was like, wait, what? No, no. <laughs> just that happens to be Deborah Shelton's birthday. Oh, cool. Uh, so just a little oh, cool. side note. Uh, we got some new cast here. Uh, John Lean uh, played Kyle Bennett in this episode from the law firm of Smithfield Bennett. He also appeared as Andrew Parkhurst on Knott's Landing in 1981 and 82. Uh, Gregory Walcott who played Jim Redfield, who was trying to sell Bobby the refinery, who looks almost mm-hmm. like he could be a relative of Guzzler. I was thinking the exact <laughs> same thing. <laughs> I wrote that in my yes. notes. Uh, he actually played uh, Navy officers with Steve Canale in the 1976 Henry Fonda film Midway, which also starred future Dallas oh. guest star Monty Markham. <laughs> 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 also, <laughs> also known as... Clayton Hollingsworth. Golden Girls? Yep. Yep. (laughs) So this, um, it was interesting, this whole, all the hoopla surrounding this episode and how they filmed um, everybody pulling the trigger in case something leaked out and... Mm -hmm. Bookies were taking bets, and the actually the advertising for this record, uh, for this episode, set a record of five hundred thousand dollars per minute. Nice. 
And um, Wait, advertising for that episode or people that wanted to advertise on Dallas in the commercial? People wanted the people that wanted to buy spots for advertising during that's the show. A lot so. for that year. I mean, it's a lot. That, but for them, that's a lot of. That's like a, Super Bowl prices. Yeah, that's yeah. that's yeah. super. That's yeah. definitely Super Bowl money. But uh, the only one that was not filmed uh, shooting Jr. was Steve Canale. I wonder why, because I would think he would be one of the ones that wanted to shoot him in the it face. It seems like he would have, yeah. They even no, had Miss Sally do it, but not Ray. Uh, yeah. Steve, right. Steve always jokes That's that if, weird. if Ray had shot JR, he would have been dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> but that would have been the end of Ray Krebs, too. <laughs> That's true, too. And then true. we wouldn't have had all those good right. storylines with Ray. In order to maintain the secrecy for the reveal... The scene was shot in August in a sound booth, um, Linda Gray's voiceover, and the scene itself was shot on the soundstage and not down in Dallas. Yeah, it definitely looked like the soundstage, and it looks like it was probably a pretty tight um, crew or whatever, you know? It's a small little production, just the three of them. Yeah, and they didn't shoot that until August. Yeah, this episode was not delivered to networks until that night, mm. right before it was supposed to air. Mm. So it was under lock and key. You really can't pull that off nowadays. Uh, no. With the yeah. internet and... Yeah. Yeah. Um, just a phenomenon that will never be repeated. No, not on that scale. No. Yeah. It's just mind-blowing. Yeah. <laughs> you imagine that many people like all getting along and liking the same thing that and in in different point? countries parliament would stop their session so people could go home and watch dallas yeah and it was interesting because the reveal happened and then a couple weeks later i always piece this you know in the same time frame because within that november 21st and the following March, you had John Lennon was shot and killed at the beginning of December. Mm, that's right. Reagan and the Pope were also shot the yep. following March. So yep. those just still, and then, you know, it's all. So you're saying JR started gun violence, or actually, Kristen was, started gun violence. <laughs> it was actually the bullet that killed Kennedy was just traveling around oh, the city. Yeah, just, it was a really magic bullet, just kept going. Exactly. <laughs> and Susan Howard returns in this episode. Yeah. But she does, she's back in town and she doesn't let Ray know in this episode. Yeah. Hmm. We'll I love Susan Howard. Okay, we'll get that. Okay. So. In case you don't know, it's a police station. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you for that establishing shot. Police station. Open up. <laughs> and woman's woman's got a lot of jewelry. So much and big jewelry, big dangly jewelry. <laughs> like you just see the close up of her rock wedding ring. <laughs> it is big. And that catatonic expression, Linda's eyes just mm -hmm. they just I don't know. I just captured it was, by it was a little bit like her drunk face. But not completely. Kind of, yeah. Because mm -hmm. Linda always said with the drunk face, she kind of like crosses her eyes a little bit. She does that weird mm -hmm. little thing. Mm -hmm. but, and then she's just basically in shock, I think. Yes. Yeah. Complete and utter yeah. shock. So she's getting she's getting butch. Her fingerprints taken, mugshot, which is a fantastic mugshot, by the way. That was my screensaver yeah. for years. It's that mugshot. Fabulous. This one. Fabulous. Yes, fabulous. yes, yes. Fabulous. And I just want to say right off the bat that best choice of a dress ever. Just the symbolism of her outfit. Exactly. It is black complete. and white. Good black and evil. Black and white. Good and bad. Right down the middle. So you don't know. We don't know. There's no clues given if she did it or not. Right. And my, my question is, first of all, do you think that the fashion people they, they the wardrobe they think they did it on purpose or was it an accidental oh, no i think it's 100 percent okay purpose. and then we've had this discussion before about how certain numbers and building numbers and all that do you think that 6306 means anything or have we already talked about this 
there's got to be something. They wouldn't have chosen that number for no reason. Oh, yeah. There probably is someone. That number means something to somebody. I don't know what. What's the number again? 6306. And I was going to Google it earlier, but I didn't. I forgot. 6306. I'm going to play with that uh, between our... Yeah, if anybody knows. This episode next like one, see if June, I can... June of 63 could be, or I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. Or maybe... I have no idea, but I just thought... I, the, 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 symbolism, the symbolism of the dress was very, like, something like David Lynch would oh, yeah. stick yes. into. It's very mm-hmm. Lynchian, and mm-hmm. it's... Lynchian, I like that. Lynch. <laughs> For sure. Mm -hmm. And just like the way that the police officer is treating her, you can just tell she's a rich white lady. (laughs) He's just like apologizing to her the whole time. Like, I'm really sorry about this. I know we're just, we arrested you on suspicion of murder, but. Because if she was a person of ethnicity, she would have been thrown in the slammer and roughhoused. And I mean, there's just, uh, Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> so yeah then her lawyer arrives uh just as the the cops trying to get her to tell the story again and he's like shut up shut up, shut up submit. <laughs> say nothing because you don't know who's listening around here especially if it's uh in the city where jr lives oh one well, yes definitely yeah yeah, you're not. You, you don't want to open your mouth. There are eyes and ears everywhere, so just shut your mouth right now. It's like they mm-hmm. say on the farm: the potatoes have eyes and the corn has ears. Oh yeah, so <laughs> she's being booked, right? Being questioned without a lawyer. Oh yeah, they will totally question like, you without a lawyer. I was like, until do, you, you demand one. I was like, do not advise. <laughs> no, <laughs> do not advise. No, do <laughs> zero out of ten. Do not recommend. And then yeah. all of a sudden, oh, poof, here's Kyle Bennett. Right. And then he's just like, shut it. Just shut like, it. Don't tell him anything. Yep. Mm-mm. This is you. And it's, you it's, do you understand these rights as I've read them to you? I'm like, really? Really? No, she doesn't. She does not understand the world of shit that she's in. No, she has no clue. It, it's and, interesting, though, I think, watching. I mean, Sarah, you've obviously been watching Knots Landing in the past. And. It's interesting watching the same actor on Dallas and on Not Signing playing different characters. Some one sometimes they'll be good on one show and bad on the other show, and it's just you kind of get to like, wait a minute, that's that's the other guy from that other show who's supposed to be evil, but he's being good here, and it's. Uh, I do that a lot when I watch shows like that. Because he's he's a lawyer here. He's you know Smithfield and Bennett, and then I flipped over to Not Landing, and he's having John Plachet's character run prostitutes at parties. Oh. Really so different, like, yeah. So different. So like, different. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and also, like, they don't make her even put on the little prison jumpsuit thing. They let her keep her fancy dress on the whole time. Yeah, jewelry and everything. It seems like that's a little against procedure, guys. She's a Ewing, Mary. I'm just kidding. That's right. She's going to Ewing jail. She breaks down think, hearing that she's going to have to spend the night in jail waiting yeah. for bail. Yeah, she freaks out. She's like, I can't sleep here. And it's like, well, girl, you're going to have to because they think you murdered JR. Or murdered. They think you tried to murder JR. Right. And, you know, he's he's the, tef, he's the Teflon Ewing because, you know, the bullets just don't seem to stick. They don't. The double jail door is closing. You have the jail cell and then the outer jail cell closing. As they put Sue Ellen into the jail. Oh, I didn't. I just, that. I just, you know, minor little observation. <laughs> I just like, I like the sound though of the jail, the the bars sliding shut. Yeah, twice, not once, but twice. Once for each bullet. Okay, so then we cut to Cliff dining outside, uh, where he sees the newspaper headline that Sue Ellen has been arrested. If you notice, though, with these newspapers, it is just the headline in the picture. If you try to look at the articles around it, there's no article written about the shootings or anything like that. Of course not, because it just it probably isn't even words in the thing. It's probably no, no, not the, real words. there are actual words. I I have the JR no. was shot one, and it was uh, there were actually like little news stories, but it's almost like they 
plastered the headline and just stuck the picture in. Probably. Right in the yeah. 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 Because I'm I'm looking, I'm going, oh, I want to see what they say about the shooting. And then I look and I'm going, no, like we didn't get that involved in the props department. <laughs> We're like, exactly. we just stuck a picture on I'd like to know who ended up with those newspapers. If they would, still exist. There could be worth some money. Uh, yeah, if they still exist, they would. It seems like they should be worth some money. So, um, yeah. so then we cut to the family talking about if Sue Ellen did it or not. How long is that phone cord? There's a <laughs> phone right next to the long. phone cords right. were long back in the day. Do you remember? I mean, we had a really long phone cord. You used to be able to go down the hallway and get in the closet yeah. and shut the door they, so they can hear you fine. They are on the <laughs> other side of the pool, <laughs> for, furthest from the house. Having their breakfast. That's true. So the phone cord has to come out the door, wrap around the pool. It's not going over the pool. It has to come around and be yeah, done. Yeah, that's like some extreme extension cord, phone cord situation. <laughs> <laughs> and it has to be done in such a manner so nobody trips. Right. That's like a 50-foot phone cord. At the least. Out, at an least. outdoor phone I, cord. I remember... Um, like a, a line from I Love Lucy where um, Ethel was telling Lucy that how she got such a long phone cord was that Fred would go into vacant apartments after a uh, tenant had moved out and take the cord. I guess you could put them together back then. I don't know. Huh. So oh, they, she was, yeah, they, so she, they had couplers that would okay, go. Couplers. Like, so yeah. it's almost like a, a it was, that kind of reminds me of like a, a coaxial cable. Like you can yeah. just, you could connect links mm -hmm. and links and links. Okay. So that must be how they did it back then, how you could have a phone in every room of the house. You just had a really long ass cord. We had right. just like one really long in our kitchen phone cord that for the phone on the wall that had the spirally. Yes. And that, that thing was like 20 feet long. You could long. <laughs> take it into the next room with you and like sit in the living room, even though the wall phone was in the kitchen. Yep. It was so long. Right. That, that's, that's for the yep. earpiece and the mouthpiece when you pull it away. But just then help us out a rotary phone where somebody can hang up on you, you know, right. in the kitchen. <laughs> right. Because at the end of the episode, JR has another phone over on the other table by the pool, closer to the house. Maybe, is it the same phone? They just move it because it just has the long. I, ho I hope so. Or that you just move. Because that, that's a lot of phones to have around. I mean, they're the Ewings. They probably have lots of phones. But even though they always end up answering that front one. All the time. Right, which is no privacy at all. No. So the lawyer calls and to see if they'll post the $100,000 bail for Sue Ellen. And they're all like, hell no. Chuck says, that. over my dead body. Right. And you know what? <laughs> if, if JR tips 200 grand in a year, then surely this is pocket change. Oh, don't, right. don't call just, me Shirley. Just, just let it, mm, Shirley. But <laughs> this is just like, I just, they all turn on her, except for Bobby. He's like, I'll raise it myself. Like, yeah. And I, like how, I, I like how jo <laughs> Jock sits there pointing at him. Yeah. Jock is getting he's, all intense. Yeah, he, he's like, absolutely not. You're not going to do that. Yeah. Rah, 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 rah. He's like, I'll raise it myself. And Pam's like, you know, I, Pam would have told him off probably, I bet. But then Miss Ellie overrules Bobby. And she's just like, Bobby... No, because if she did it, she could come try again. Don't put your brother in danger. And he's like, I don't think she really did it, but all right. <laughs> yeah. And Bobby is, you know, always tries to be ride, ride the middle of the fence there and try to. He's like the, the peacemaker tries to be. And one day it looks all the evidence looks bad, obviously. It does but, look bad. But you have to, they oh. all know her like in that. The, the mother of the grandson, like they just come up to it really quick. But I mean, I guess it looks like it, but her, her prints are all over the gun. The gun was in the closet. It was JR's gun, which came out of the drawer. And she literally doesn't seem to know if she did it or not. Right. Right. Oh. Yeah, so it really Con conven bad. Conveniently drunk and blacked out. Yeah. So then he, the lawyer, what this, what's the lawyer's name? Kyle Bennett. Kyle Bennett, he tells Sue Ellen, like, sorry, yeah, they're not going to do it. Do you have money in your own name? And she's like, I'm sorry. Are you kidding me? No, I don't. I don't have anything we, in my name. And we learned that Patricia is in the Orient. Did we already no. know that? 
She was in Europe at last. She's check. in Europe. Now, okay, now, now she's in. So the she's Orient. obviously. She's traveling the world. She's taking her anal road show on on tour, and she's <laughs> like antiques road show. <laughs> right, right. She wants to screw in every continent. <laughs> And also, he's like, you don't have any friends like you could borrow the money from? And she's just like, yeah, I don't. That's, Sorry. that's kind of, that's kind and of it was sad. really sad. It's sad. Because she was like thinking for a minute and then she's just like, yeah, there's, it's like, no. there's no one. No. It's such, an sorry empty, for it's such an empty life. You know, you have yeah. all that money and that prestige, but you have no friends. But yeah, no, no, no one that you could count on that much. And, and Kristen doesn't have a, have a penny, as Sue Ellen says. She doesn't. No, no, she's um, you know, just no one. Except she's, got some, for, she's got some mileage on her bedpost, but you know, yeah. she doesn't. Except for she does have one person. The one person who shows up for her is Cliff. Right, and we should mention that all of her jewelry is locked up in JR's safe. Right, except for the stuff she had to turn over so, to the police. <laughs> right, well, why doesn't, oh, they can't get that out of evidence, the attorney, to sell it. Yeah, probably not. No, because, yeah, at that point, they're probably like, it could be involved in a crime, you know, so they're not going to do that. Oh, that's true. Even though that ring probably could get, could have bailed her out. Several yeah, times uh, over. Honestly. She could have shot 15 people and, and had enough money yeah. for all the bail. Exactly. You think that was a $100,000 ring? Uh, you see, like, if that, if that motherfucker was real? Damn. Yeah, probably. You see Damn. the size of that thing? <laughs> I mean, that's like the Rock of Gibraltar. Oh, the thing is huge. So anyway, so Cliff shows up and uh, you can see like as soon as Cliff walks in, how her posture changes and she's like trying she to like defend she herself. She composes herself. Yeah. You yeah, come yeah. here to gloat or something like that. Yeah. She's just worried because she just immediately goes to like worst case scenario. And Cliff is just like, I'm here to help you if you'll let me. Like, I know you need help. She wonders if the DA sent him. Yeah. And he said that, you know, I'm on vacation. How does she, uh, nobody told her he, he's on vacation? I'm guessing news travels pretty quick in Dallas, though. OK, would be my guess. Right. I just didn't want to make that leap, like assuming it's like when somebody says, oh, well, you, you knew so and so was pregnant. Didn't you? And it's like, no, nobody told me. <laughs> or he's going to assume that she knew knows because uh, Jr. probably would immediately know that Cliff was put on. Uh, administrative leave or whatever for being right. If, if JR can try to control the Franklin Horner from this hospital bed, then he yeah. must. He knows. And so then, therefore, he assumes that Sue Ellen would know whether she actually did or not. Probably not. Mm -hmm. But he just assumes that. So, yeah, she, he's like, if you need, I'll be your friend if you need a friend, which she does need a friend. And then he says that he's going to try to find the money right. to get her she, out. She starts to tell Cliff that she doesn't remember what happened because she had been mm -hmm. drinking. And the look of disappointment on his face that she was drinking. I know, I know. Yeah. It was just like, oh, yeah. it it fell off the, it make it it fell off the wagon. I felt really bad too, like going back to where they were like trying to come up with like who could put up the bail money? Do you have, you know, a hundred thousand in your own name? And she's like, yeah. and I wrote down, this is why people need to be independently financial, financially independent folks, because, yep. because of this shit right here, like for the love of God, get shit in writing. Mm -hmm. Don't marry somebody thinking they're going to take care of you because get shit in your name. Um, this is actually a right. lesson my mother name. taught me early. So so if you're going to be accused of shooting your spouse, number. make sure you have yeah. uh, money to bail yourself nope. out of jail. Did you say no PIN numbers too? No, your PIN numbers? No, your, your joint savings account number? Because I got fucking screwed. So Cliff says he's going to come up with the money. Good luck with that. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's, you know that he wants to, he's, he's, he's saying that as someone who really wants to come up with a hundred grand. Yeah, really he, quickly. I think he really wants to help her, you know. Like, he does. He really does. Because he, right. he really cares about her. Yeah. He does. And, Good luck with that, though. Yeah. Good, good, good right. luck. So then we cut to Bobby, who's businessing again. He's on the phone with uh, a guzz guzzler doppelganger here. Mm -hmm. Like guzzler's cousin, probably. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And we don't learn his name until after he gets off the phone and he's in conversation with Franklin Horner. Mm -hmm. yep. But bo Bobby wants to buy a refinery. And this is going to be an ongoing thing, I, I think. Yeah, Always. Bobby wants to buy a refinery. This guy's selling it. Sounds like super cheap. And he's like, oh my God, this is an amazing thing. I'm going to call and get a loan. And it's, we're going to do this. And then he's told that Franklin Horner is there in person by Connie. And Bobby says, oh, 
I think I only need five minutes. I can get this wrapped up and we'll get it done. Yeah. Not so fast, Bobby. Nib Franklin is uh, bad news. He's like, yeah, well, they're turning your loan down. Bobby's like, that's ridiculous. Why would they do that? And they're using excuses of Jr. being laid up, Sue Ellen being arrested, and thinking, oh, maybe Bobby's distracted. And we learned the guy's name on the phone was Jim Redfield. Jim Redfield, okay. Yeah. What is with, I have never liked this fashion thing, though, the ugly patches on elbows of suits. I literally wrote that down. I literally yeah. wrote the same thing down that I don't understand it. I, I understand it, like how, how it's important for like actually use because I'm sure those get holes in the thing, but why is that fashionable? Uh, and it, it wasn't like it's all, well, I mean, I'm sure like you said, it was used for that purpose a long time ago, but then in the 80s, it was like a, I mean, I guess kind of like this shoulder pad thing, like do we really need shoulder pads? Right, right. I mean, but, but yeah. they were a, I well, know. you know, a lo- there were a lot of cat fights in the 80s and they went at, went at each other like linebackers. That's sometimes true. That's true. Older pads. Yeah. Bobby loves it's, those suit coats, though. Like all through the 80s, he has always the, the patch on the elbow. I never liked those. I think they Me either. They're ugly. They Same. they don't they don't belong. Mm-mm. You didn't see them on Franklin Horner's. Uh, oh, no, he's way jacket. too classy for that. No, no, yes. Yeah. And he's just he's just kind of being a dick. He's like someone who knows he has JR on his side and he's talking down to Bobby. And if I was if I was Bobby in that minute, I would have been like, okay, cool. So we're pulling all of our money out of your bank because he has the ability to do that right now. So I'd be like, well, fuck you, man, that I'm taking all my money out. He should have called the bluff and pulled the money out immediately. Yeah, he should have. But he didn't, which Bobby, you have to not just bluff. Right. And Lawrence Haddon, who plays Franklin Horner, the way he's talking down to Bobby, it is the same way that he was talking down uh, when he played the doctor on Not Sanding that took Val's babies. And he was talking down to her saying, oh, yeah, you were delirious during the delivery. And he was talking down to just everybody that was trying to investigate. He's just really good at talking down to people. Mm. Yeah. And it's just, ugh, just you just want to like punch these people. And I'm sure in real life, some of the, these Probably people nice are guy. very, very nice people, and they play the part so well that you want to beat the crap out of them if you see them. Well, it's much more fun to play a bad guy. So, oh, it is. We, La- Larry made that point perfectly clear. And if I was an totally. actor, I would want to be a bad person. I would like I'd totally. be a bad yes. Yeah, I want to be like the evil bitch. Like that's who I want to be. When I was like in middle school, my dream was to be like the bad character on a soap opera. Yeah. The evil lady on a soap opera. Yeah. (laughs) Donna Mills played her part very well on Knott's Landing when she was as Abby. Yes. She relished that role. So then we cut to Sue Ellen, who has been released. Her bail has been paid. Still wearing the same clothes. Still wearing the same clothes. Probably Mm -hmm. starting to take on a little bit of a scent. At this Probably, point. yeah, just a wee bit. I mean, mostly because she's been highly nervous and anxious, so she's been sweating a lot. Ew. Ew. Yeah. yeah. Right. So she's gonna go out and get her jewelry back, but yep. we don't know. We don't know who bailed her out. We don't. She she asked, and they're like, "Yeah, I don't know." So huh. I don't know either. They really at the jail. They obviously don't have to care as long as it's they get, their, uh, get the money. As long as they get their money, they don't care where it comes from. Yeah, they don't care. Right. So then she takes a taxi to South Fork, and they just like the taxi, and she just sit on the outside of the fence and look in. Right, and that's kind of sad because she has nowhere to go, and the driver. I said, "Where would she go?" I think that's what she's realizing. I think she started going to South Fork, and then she's like, "I can't go in." I you can't know? go in, and I don't know. I don't have a place to go. She probably right. doesn't even have money for a hotel. Because Jock will have Miss Sally get the shotgun out of the hall closet if she shows up. <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, and yeah, she probably doesn't even have like, I- I'm sure they probably cut off her credit cards. You know, she probably has no money. She mm-hmm. has no idea where to go. So I feel bad for her in that scene. And the taxi driver is really impatient. Yeah, he just like, lady, where are you going? I'm going to take you back into Dallas. And that's where they head. Go to commercial, come back. And Mitch is bounding down the stairs at SMU with his 80s hair bopping up and down. Boop, 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 boop. That was a nice blowout that he had. <laughs> yes. 
He's super busy going somewhere and then he runs into Lucy. And she's apologizing for her temper and this and that. And she tries to make it up to him by buying him the books. Oh, yeah. Was, but, okay, here's my question. How does she know exactly which books he needs? I, I Did he tell thing. her? He just said an anatomy book. It's got to be more than one anatomy book. I think she can find out by going to the bookstore and asking Uh, what books you need for this class. That's true. Lucy playing stalker. Well, yeah. basically, when I saw this again, she's not dumb. No, but when I saw this again, (laughs) I remember being maybe not not dumb. I just play dumb. Maybe not the first time I saw it, but like this time when it was on. Um, when they were playing Mm -hmm. them on, was it TNT? Fact mm-hmm. in the nine, I guess yeah. ninety TNN. Um, TNN. 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 Yeah. And, um, so, soap, soap net. I remember watching that episode and being like, "She's such an idiot" because she knows how he is about money and also the male ego and all that. I was like, it's "Just it's just going to make him mad." Like, and I remember thinking, it, and then I watched it again, and right? I was like, "Oh my god, she cringy." <laughs> it's like I, like, I'll you're, buy you're a you used set, Lucy. And it's like. You know what? And why don't you accept the book and then take her to a nice dinner? Right. Get her back. You know, that's what people do. It's okay. And then be like, you- I know I'm busy, but let's plan next week. Like, I don't work from this time till this time. We'll hang out. I'll make time for you. Basically, but- if you're so worried about the cost of the book, then take her out on a date with that amount of money spent. Yeah, or something. Like, what's the big deal? But hello, 1980. And and with his schedules, (laughs) getting those lab jobs at the last minute, that sort of thing, he doesn't know if a job's going to pop up and he's going to go. Yeah, he 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 accepts them because she's just because he says like you shouldn't have done this, and then she says, "I know, I do lots of things I shouldn't do," and then I think he's charmed by it, so he's like, "All right." Well, how can you resist that little smiling? bundle of energy is there you know though she's, she's so he obviously likes her like he's trying not to like her but he likes her that's what i'm saying i think the whole their whole interaction is so awkward from the from the get-go but i do yeah. think he's trying not to like her he wants to be like focused on his studies and all that but i just it was all it always made me feel awkward to watch them because she was trying mm-hmm. so hard right and he's kind of like and every time it was like one step forward, two steps back. Yes, exactly. step they don't forward, have a lot of chemistry. Back. As much as I love Lee McCluskey, like the two of them don't have a lot. No, of I, I never thought. Up to this point. Up to this point, for sure. No, up to, up to this point of the ones she's been involved with, who did she have the chemistry with? The mo- the best. The gay one. May yeah. May wearing is it? Kit Manwaring? Kit Manwaring? Yeah. Kit Manwaring. I thought, Kit Manwaring. I thought they had yeah, it. Ma- I think ma- it was the most genuine, I think. Yeah. yeah so far, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, and, and working with Mark Wheeler, that was one of her favorite storylines, too, Charlene. So that makes I fun. could see. Yeah. Yeah. And it's too bad they didn't continue with the Manwaring family being so, because they, they were a powerful family. Yeah. Yeah, that would have been inter- interesting. It, but then it's too they would have just... to have an ongoing like gay storyline, which probably in 1980 would not right. have been worth anything they wanted to touch. But I, I wish. Right. right. And it's, you know, something that's representation just... matter. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I think that's why Dynasty did what they did in the, their beginning, because they had a whole, you know, mm-hmm. storyline. And that character stayed for the series. Yeah, and the re- and the mini series. Yeah. So I don't know. Play, played by actor Everybody one, else. actor two, and then actor one again, because it was yeah. the original actor who played him in the mini series. Kind of like uh, it reminds me of Becky on Roseanne, and on the, <laughs> oh, how yeah. they kept switching yeah, yeah. between uh, yeah Lacey and um, mm-hmm. Sarah Sarah, Sarah Chalk. Yeah. So Cliff gets called back into work now that Sue Ellen's been booked. They're like. All right. I guess you didn't do it, Cliff. You can come back to work. He's getting ready for an appointment. We don't, I don't know what this appointment is. No, he's really excited about it, though. And he's like, yeah, I can't come in today. Sorry. And they're like, oh, the boss won't like that. And he's like, well, too bad. I'm not that's, coming in the middle of the day. That's his problem. <laughs> it's not right. my problem. We'll have to deal with it in the, tomorrow morning because I've, I've got places to go and people to see. And, mm-hmm. you know, and then there's I'm, a knock on the door. Gee, who could that be? It's not Pam. It's Sue Ellen because she has nowhere else to go. I think that's the only, he's the only person who's been nice to her in the past. 
48 hours or so. And so she goes there. She's there to thank him for the bail, but. Right. He's like, uh, I, I tried, but I didn't raise the money. Sorry. Just like trying to raise. I raised about as much money as my campaign raised. <laughs> Which without, ain't much. <laughs> without the excluding the money that JR gave Alan Beam. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But he's ha- he's happy she's there and he but he's still at the same time is like, I have an appointment I really have to go to, but you should stay here. You should stay here and like chill and hang out, at, watch TV. At, at first she doesn't want to. She wants to, you know, she doesn't she, think it would it, yeah. Be a good idea. And he, I don't think she wants to have to be there, but she has no choice. She has nowhere to go. South Fork. Eh. Patricia's not around. Eh. Um, Dusty's dead. Eh. Um, nope. There's, no, there's nowhere so, to go. So she's just like, all right. And so then he leaves with her just sitting in the apartment. And she has more emoting again. Are, are we drinking when she emotes or is it Miss Ellie? It was Miss Ellie. I mean, do we want to add her into it? (laughs) Her wordless emoting? Her wordlessly emoting? (sighs) Anytime Sue Ellen uses her eyes to convey a message. uh, Convey an emotion. (laughs) All right. All right. Is that how we want to categorize that? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Sure. It's not Betty Davis eyes. It's Sue Ellen eyes. eyes. Someone needs to redo that song. Paige and Kim Carnes, where is your career? <laughs> yeah, what else are you doing, Kim Carnes? Come on. Yeah. So then Jock and Ray are out riding horses. Yeah, and they're heading the two stick pasture, but this is that shot where you can see mm-hmm. South Fork in the background, and it's literally if you've seen the post that I posted of Ray's house mm-hmm. and the aerial dot above, it's kind of halfway between. Oh, okay. South Fork and that brick house. I have a side note, and this has to do with Ray, and I just have to get this off my chest. It has nothing to do with this episode. But I rewatched this weekend, um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, the Quentin Tarantino film with Brad Pitt. Yes. Dallas and is Brad Pitt. Dallas is Brad Pitt. And when I was watching it, I was like, who is Brad Pitt reminding me of? He reminds me of someone. I realized he was reminding me of Steve Keneally, Ray. I think he looks a lot like him now. Who, spoiler cut, in that episode in the... Right! <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. Like he, And then when this scene came on, I was like, yeah, that looks like nowadays 50-something Brad Pitt. Which I never thought, I never saw that coming. It hit me like a pile of bricks when I was watching the movie again. Who's embroiled in some custody issues with Angelina Jolie. Oh, yeah, and I think I read that and, in the supermarket. Yep. And, what, but, and one of his sons doesn't want anything to do with them. And blah, blah, blah. But he's really good in that movie. I really, I really love that movie. I do need to see that movie. It's, it's really good. It. Most of you like are into like the man's murders. Like I didn't realize it was going to be kind of about that. So, oh, I love the main murders. So back to Jock and Ray. So Jock is just worried about how much more Miss Sally can take. Right. Gary's not coming back. Bobby wants to leave. JR's JR nearly been shot to death. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, Jock's out there on the horse and riding. So he's, he's, Still looks like he's doing all right, you know. Yeah, no, he looks. He looks. I actually noted that he looks pretty healthy and fit. Right. And Bobby says that Miss, not Bobby, Ray says that Miss Ellie's one tough lady, and which that's very true. Yeah, and they just mm-hmm. kind of end the scene and ride off, mm-hmm. off to two stick to check on the herd. How did all these pastures and parts of South Fork get their names? I'd love to know that. I'd love to know how the how they. Two stick pasture and this pasture. Oh. And that. Yeah, I never thought about that before. There's a there's no. reasons because my grandfather he had I don't know them but I remember I guess it's like different parcels or something and they call it instead of saying like the South part you know what I'm talking about they they name it something and maybe that's why so they'll know. Like right. There's part with like the cattle. There's part with like the pond and you know I don't know. And it's funny how they give something like two stick pasture and this and that and then they call another one just. Section 40. Yeah. 
Section 40. I guess there was nothing like that set it apart. <laughs> that one. And why not 37? You know, 40. <laughs> Probably because 37 was already taken, but it's called like, I don't know. Little Bighorn or something like that. Right. I don't know. Something <laughs> crazy. Yeah. Uh, Cliff goes to see Dave Culver. And that's his big appointment. He was really excited to talk to Dave Culver about politics and possibly helping Dave Culver with his new campaigns and stuff. And then you just he see... wants to he wants to wiggle back into the political scene. Yeah. Right. Because he, he hates his job. Oh, yeah. I what is he like pushing papers? He's not even a mm-hmm. yeah, ugh. he's like a glorified assistant. And no one's respected him. You can tell no one respects him at work, blah, blah, blah. So he's just Yeah, crazy. he's he's the Rodney Dangerfield of the DA's office. <laughs> <laughs> no respect. <laughs> And then you just kind of see in the background, Donna in the background, and she looks over and sees Cliff and just makes a face. It's like, uh oh, I do not want that poison apple touching this batch of golden delicious. <laughs> and then, so then she comes over and they like, to, oh, hey, good to see you, blah, 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 blah. And then they go to leave. And is Cliff hitting on Donna? Because I don't. It, I don't. <laughs> He's it like, seemed a little oh, like he was hitting on Donna, and that was just a weird moment. He's like, I hope to see you again or something. I, and she's yeah, like, he's I'm sure like, you do. Yeah, Donna, no, no. I hope to see you again. And she's just like, Yeah, I bet you do. All right, here's my <laughs> here's my weirdness with this little part of the scene. When Donna comes over, she says that they have a plane to catch to Austin in a half an hour. Um, you should sure be get, at the airport, man. <laughs> you need to get to the airport go through security and they have boarding time about what, 20 minutes before mm-hmm. you're flying. So yeah. they're probably about to already be boarding and you're still standing here at this. Yeah, but rally. this is 1980. There's probably no security. I mean, yeah, it's walk into the, the walk window. onto the plane. You just walk on. Here's my ticket. They don't probably even don't even check to see what name is on it. How with your, probably your whole suitcase with you. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? We don't know. It's 1980. It doesn't matter. It's like, it's like that scene in um, Airplane 2 when he's going into the uh, Sunny Bonus in the gift shop. Yeah, I'll take the second time bomb on the left, please. <laughs> <laughs> but there, there could be traffic on the way to the airport. You, know, right. you, know? you definitely should already be at the airport. I, I, I feel like she's lying in this scene. Yeah. Just to she, leave. Right. She's got to be getting him out of there because yeah, she's she, like uh, quit talking to Cliff Barnes. Cliff Barnes is poison fruit. Yes, as far as she's concerned. Right. And so then we cut to dinner at South Fork and Bobby's late. Where has he been? Well, they all accuse him and then all, each other of posting bail for Swellen. And at this point, That's we still don't know who did it. Right? We, no, we don't. We don't. We have no we idea. We don't know who, who shot it. JR. We don't know who bailed Sue Ellen out. So right. the. And so they're just like, well, you must have been you. It must have been you. And, and yeah, none of them actually did. So. <laughs> Yeah, and Bobby takes a shot at Jr. by saying, "You yeah, know, if I were going to do something, I would tell you about it." <laughs> right. <laughs> Little dig there. Passive aggressive statement. Exactly. Well, Jock's Jock's pissed, and I note in the scene his hair looks like it could be a wig at this point. Yeah. Jock's hair—it just—it's blown out funny. It's either blown out really puffy. Or it looks like he's already started wearing a wig. Yeah, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm trying to get check, it right now. I'll have to go check that again. It could be that he's losing hair and they gave him a nice blowout to make it look puffier. Right. Yeah. That's That to me was the first sign of <laughs> something. Yeah. Just the, the, the way the hair was. And then later in the episode with those huge glasses that covered half his face. Yeah. Something seemed to just slightly askew. Something's amiss. At yes. the joke, okay. So that's my that's my jo- uh, Jim Davis beginning of the Jim Davis watch for me. So Ugh. Davis death watch coming. Um, so we cut to Sad. Cliff walking into his apartment. He's bought Sue Helen flowers. Uh, did we say that Pam and Miss Ellie were glad that Sue Ellen wasn't spending another night in jail? We didn't, but they, 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 they were basically like, yeah, we're glad that, you know, she's not in jail. Like, it sucks that, you know. Well, I'm glad that, yeah. you know, she's out and all, but you didn't do a damn thing to get her out. 
You're just like, you told Bobby to leave her there. I'm like, well, I'm, I'm glad she's I'm surprised out. Pam didn't Must speak up more really? for this whole thing because she'd probably, seems to me that she'd be like cho- choosing Sue Ellen over JR. But yeah. she's. I know. Well, then you heard JR like at the table, like, oh, Pam, are you giving money to that brother of yours? Blah, blah, blah. And it's like, fuck you, JR. This is Pam. After she has suffered two miscarriages and found out her father isn't her father and has been looking for her mother. True. Exactly. Well, that's true. She doesn't, does, that she doesn't have the emotional right energy for any of it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. She was on her way to California. She's just like, fuck out of here. I, I'm not even dealing with it. <laughs> right. And then you had to yeah. go get you shot. Had, you had to piss off half the city. Against my will. state, probably. Right. <laughs> like, I and wouldn't even I'm be back here, here today. I would be hanging out with Valine and Karen McKenzie. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, Pam, she's a little flat. Cliff got some flowers. Yep, he got flowers for Sue Ellen, which I think is super adorable. Because I, like, I don't think they would have made a great couple, but I love, like, when Cliff gets all, like, vulnerable Cliff, and he gets that way about Sue Ellen all the time, and I think it's adorable. I know. I like them together, but never really happened. He, he's he's sweet, sweet on her. Because I don't think she really cares about him the way that he cares about her. Right. Oh. Uh, I think for her, it was more of a... Mm-mm. He did. Oh, yeah. He felt harder, but for her, it's he more of harder. a... There's a whole side of... Well, this is JR's enemy. I'm going to piss JR off. Basically, she just wanted to bang him, right, knowing that right. she was and, banging him and it would piss JR off. And he, he caught found the out. feelings. And he and caught feelings. She caught just, goes, feels. <laughs> he just feels. goes to him when she needs him. Like, she's every just time. always, every, every time. time, like, I have no yep. other choice but to be here. And then he's like, oh, okay, here's some flowers. Yeah. That, <laughs> yeah. That, that sucks. I know it does. <laughs> it's pretty <laughs> shitty, Sue Ellen. You got to be feeling pretty damn low to go back. I think she does feel bad about it because I think like she knows, she knows too, and she's, she's like, using him. She's like, ah, uh, uh-huh. so yeah, Cliff. Uh, remember when yeah. you called me? I literally have. Remember when you called go. me a parasite? Well, here I am again, sucking the life out of you because I have yeah. nowhere else to go. <laughs> literally, yep. nowhere and nobody. Nowhere. Like I have no friends. The only family I know deserted me. I don't have my baby. Help. Yep. Uh, <laughs> but she's... Uh, she so left he a comes well-written home. note. Yeah, and she's gone, and she left a note that said, Cliff, coming here is a mistake. I'll be all right, Sue Ellen. He's she's like, mur, mur. she's mur, mur. gone like the wind. Yeah. Gone with the wind. And you know she's desperate because of where she goes next. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yes. She's got to be desperate. She goes to Kristen's. And I'm shocked that, I guess on one hand, I'm shocked that Kristen is still in the Ewing condo. I was but just thinking I guess that. It's just, it's just because I guess JR was literally shot and in the hospital and hasn't thought like to kick her out. Yeah. To make sure she's out. But yeah. Sue Ellen asks if she can stay there. Kristen is super sweet. She's like, oh, of course, Sue Ellen. And then Sue Ellen's like, oh, what would I have done without you all recently? Like, you've been amazing. This is another one. Do not advise. Bad choice. Mm. Warning. <laughs> warning. Danger. She had been wandering the street, too. Danger <laughs> noodle. <laughs> Danger noodle. <laughs> and Kristen gives her that hug. Yeah. Yeah, big hug. Sisterly what are sisters? Love. What are sisters for? Yeah, oh, please. Gross. Blech. It was like when they met outside the hospital and, she, and Sue Ellen's like, can you go in and get JR's mind off of his troubles? Yeah. Do you know what you were, how they were doing that before? She can. She shouldn't. <laughs> oh, I love that scene in the last episode when she pushed the wheelchair <laughs> across the floor. Yeah. No, that was good. Oh. The Bobby Park's right in front of Ewing Oil. Drink. Drink. <laughs> and then Sue Ellen had been there waiting for him. She's changed her clothes, finally. Finally. So she probably, uh, hopefully she had a shower and just didn't swap clothes. Where did she get the clothes from? Where did she get the change of clothes? Kirsten. So I just thought. Of, she probably oh, borrowed some of Kirsten's clothes. The same but, size, but still. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, or they're close enough in size that 
Sue Ellen could. Right. Oh, but wait, didn't JR have that closet stocked with clothes anyway? With just random clothes, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. Eight, he, he did. did six to be a two. Yeah. Yeah. He, I forgot. He did, like, he did like to stock the condo. He did. You never knew, knew who was going to be there with him. So. <laughs> and, well, since he stocked the condo, what's to say that condo's not bugged? I've always thought that. I've always hey. thought that. I mean, it never came up, so he's obviously not smart enough to do that, but... At least not now, but would have been a good idea. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. So Suelen is there because she really needs to see her baby. Right, and he says that Jr. doesn't hate her. He's upset and worried. Bull crap, Bobby. Right. Bull well, crap. Bobby wants to believe that. Yeah. Right. So she wants him to ask to talk to Jock and Miss Ellie to get her just just to see the baby because she's like, if I end up going to jail and I haven't seen my son since way before this, like I don't think I can do it. Like he's the one thing I have. And so I was like, All right, I guess I'll try. Yeah. He doesn't well, want but, to, but and then he brushes off to go to a meeting of some sort. I think he's using that as a way to just duck out. I think he feels awkward about the whole thing. Yeah. Right. Right. That's his way of ducking out like Donna says that she and Dave have yes. to be at the airport in half an hour. Lots of excuses in this episode. Just say what you're feeling. Say what's on your mind. Say your internal dialogue and just get it out of the system. So then Donna finds Cliff. Like runs into him in downtown Dallas. And yeah, because Cliff, Cliff is coming out of a building, that, and Bobby was trying to go into a building. And and he's like, "Oh, hey, I was gonna I was trying to gonna come find you." And she's just like, "Yeah, you need to stay away from Dave. You're poison fruit. You need you to stay away. You are bad news bears, buddy. Stay away from him. That's right. And then he's like, "Wait, I'm gonna sell you on my strength." So he do, he actually like. He tries to sell her on all the ways that he would be good for Dave and all of his strengths. And she listens, which is something that Donna is good at that is not well, not a lot of people on this show are good at, which is just like listening and like taking it in before making a rash decision. Right. Because she came the reasons there. With, I like Donna. And she came there with the intention of saying, stay away. Yeah. Go away. And now he's making his sales pitch. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And she's not immediately saying no. And she's not saying yes. She's just listening and taking it in and going from there. Also right. decided it, the music in here is a cross between Dark Shadows and Scooby-Doo. <laughs> <laughs> Rover here. <laughs> I, <laughs> I like how she said she won't let Dave ruin his career, career the way Cliff did his. Right. But did Cliff really ruin his career or did JR ruin his career? The public perception is that Cliff ruined his career. That's true. And she actually probably doesn't know for sure that JR did ruin it. So that's good. Right. Thing. She doesn't have that knowledge. She doesn't. But I like how Cliff says, uh, how it's hot out here. Why don't we discuss over a cool drink? The way he says cool drink is like, hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think he has his eyes on Donna a bit here. Yeah. Then we cut to Dr. Elby's office where Sue Ellen's car is parked right there again. Right. In the same spot. <laughs> and she's explaining her dream again. Yeah. She's just like, I, I must have done it. I just have a hard time believing that I actually did it. And then he suggests like, he's like, I could hypnotize you if you want. And she's, then you she's, might remember. She's freaked out about that because yeah. if she remembers that she shot him, she's going to be horrified. Right. She doesn't like that idea at all. But it's really the only way to know. As I said, what, don't right. you want to know, though? Like, wouldn't you want to know for sure? Or at least right. remember something. Going, right. Like, something that could help you. Exactly. Right. Get some definitive answers uh, to what period of time you're missing. And, and I hate to say it, but he still creeps me the fuck out. Dr. Elby. Yes. I mean, just the way that he looks, he looks like Skeletor <laughs> and or a serial killer all like in one. And Skeletor serial killer. And it's 
hitchhiker and a hitchhiker on one. <laughs> so, so now he's like a therapist, but a culmination of everybody's nightmare. So exactly. now are we gonna uh, now are we gonna post a picture of him and Skeletor next to each other on the I'll do right now. Skeletor. <laughs> nice. With like a nice like blowout hairdo, you know, you need like the big round brush for that action. Hey, uh, I think okay, we, if any of our listeners out there can Photoshop some Dr. Oh my God. hair onto Skeletor. Oh my God, please, please do it. Please do it. And then I will post it <laughs> on our thing. <laughs> Holy I think shit. We should, we should get a collection do. of all the 80s <laughs> hair on the men. Oh my God. Yeah. Make a post. Because it's starting to get interesting. We had the guzzler hair. We had the, the oh. Bobby's hair. Is like a Bobby's helmet hair head. just at, sometimes just gets really big. It looks yeah. like a, a helmet at some point. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's... <laughs> Yep. And then you then you had Mitch's hair. Boop, 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 boop. And then when JR kind of had the little like faux bang action in the front. Oh yeah. <laughs> kind of plastered to his head. Yeah, it reminded me a little of his oh. I dream of Janie days almost. Yeah. But um so JR's leaving the hospital. Right, because he was going for a, a checkup, obviously, because he's yeah, already been home. He probably has been at some physical therapy, would be my guess, too. Right. Um, and he's in a brown suit with a matching pla brown plaid blanket over his legs. And I didn't know. I was like, why do people wear blankets over their legs if they're in a wheelchair? Like, I didn't know. So I looked it up. Why? Wow. And it is because if you can't move your legs or not move them well, their circulation in that lower area uh, will not be as good. So your, um, your blood won't be as warm. So the having a warm blanket on your legs can help with circulation. Oh. So, make, the that more makes sense. you know. <laughs> that, that, that makes sense. Yeah. So his security team, they are taking him out of the limousine at... Did we identify the restaurant? Is it the Cattleman's Club? Did we... I didn't. I couldn't catch which one it was. I, it was a nondescript restaurant. Yeah. And they're bringing him in, and he's struggling to get down the stairs or the ramp or the thing, and he uh, bangs into the table, and Kyle Bennett's at the table, and <laughs> it's just a painful struggle watching it's awkward. him. Awkward. Yeah. yeah it, like when they're pulling him out of the car and putting him in the chair, it's like this is the mighty J.R. Ewing. Right. Yeah. It surprised me that he was going to a restaurant, honestly. I wouldn't want to be seen yeah, in public like that of... while I'm recuperating. Mm. Well, definitely like JR, because yeah. mostly in the last episode, he was really like so weird about anyone seeing him in a wheelchair, you know? So I guess mm. he's I guess he's gotten more used to it, which is good. It's good. He's gotten more used to it. Um, he, he's going to have to in case he's permanently paralyzed. We don't know. Right. We don't know yet. Uh, so that, yeah, he meets Kyle, the lawyer, Kyle, and he just wants the dirt on Sue Ellen. Not the like, Merrily Stone suit. Or yeah. And, and he's like, you know, I can't tell you that because of client privilege. And he's just like, but you can. But you can tell me. He's like, I can't. And then he basically threatens to take away the business because he's just like, you know, you have you have two things here that are sort of like what a conflict of interest. And so then he's like, you know what? You're right. I'm going to drop this to Ellen case and I'm going to refer to someone else. Someone, someone else that owes you nothing. <laughs> and Jared laughs. He's like, yeah, who's that? Nobody. <laughs> and he has that. He has that grin. Do we, do we drink when JR grins like that? Oh my God, we will be drunk, but we, we, we should, should do it now. Evil JR grin. Yeah, we're going to need new livers if we have to do it after every time. <laughs> okay, so then JR's actually interacting with his son. Oh my feeding God, him, sound feeding him alarm. grapes. Are they playing with grapes? Uh, I don't know if they're playing with grapes here. They're playing with grapes later, and I have something to say about that. I, I, thought, it, I thought that both scenes with them each playing with grapes with their son, and I thought that was like a common thread to the way they were playing with him. Could be, but here's the thing, is you're not supposed to give toddlers grapes. This, like, was this was this was 1980. Did they know this? Ten little bitty pieces or halves right. or grapes or hot dogs. You have to cut that shit up because kids die because they it's, it's like the it perfect down. size to like <laughs> get stuck in their tracheas. Did you ever see those Gerber chicken sticks? Those were nasty. Yes. But those Ugh. those like dissolve. But you know, a grape doesn't dissolve. The whole time I'm like, <laughs> well, the hot dog, you, you, the hot dog is almost the same as a chicken stick in a way but it is well but the, the gerber ones are made of a thing that dissolve really quickly yeah like and, the Vienna sausages. 
Ooh, Vienna sausage. Ugh, oh, God. Gross. Yeah, I hate those things. But a that, hot dog you have to cut into That can go away pieces. with spam. Ugh. You do. <laughs> it's the same family, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, but um, that that's... This was nineteen eighty. This was nineteen eighty. They probably yeah. I'm weren't. sure they didn't. They weren't hep to that yet. But the mom but, and me was just like, hey, hey. I like to think though that they were both using grapes with him, uh, just as a, as a little to, through line. Yeah, a little through line, yeah. and maybe that's all Tyler Banks wanted to eat that day. Was <laughs> maybe grapes. that's all he wanted. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he sucks that thing he, right in his mouth too. <laughs> <laughs> and then Teresa puts him to bed because Mrs. Reeves is long gone at this point. Yeah, thank, thank God. Um, and so then Bobby brings up the whole Sue Ellen wanting to see John Ross thing. They call him John of, Ross. In front of like the entire family, which seemed like a bad move to me. Like, yeah. should we just bring that up in private? Yeah. But... Actually, yes. JR is pissed. Jock is pissed. Yeah, everybody's mad. And then Ellie just speaks, she just makes, she lays it down because Ellie is the law. And Ellie says that she and Pam will take the baby to see Sue Ellen. So instead of LA law, it's Ellie law. It is Ellie law. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's good. I like that. Yeah. And this is a scene where Jock's glasses are huge. And it makes me wonder if his eyes are starting to. He's worn glasses in the past, though. No, but these ones are huge on us. Well, like, that was also the fashion for 1980. Wait. So, which are kind of fashion again. Yeah. I think, though, maybe soon after that scene where I thought he was wearing a wig at the other maybe, scene, maybe. that maybe I, I'm just starting to look for clues. Maybe. Because you want to start, I, I, at some point, we're going to start to see that sad deterioration in Jim. And it's, it's going yeah. to be painful to watch. So, Wait, do we? What day did he die? He died in eighty one. August twenty, uh, April twenty sixth of nineteen eighty one. April twenty sixth, eighty one. So, oh, that's really not that far from right now. Uh-uh. Right. And I remember, didn't they say he had flashcards and stuff or key cards because he couldn't remember his lines anymore? Mm. Something like and that. This, there's a point where most of his scenes were shot where he was sitting down. Yeah, just standing You'll up. You'll notice was, it. Ever somebody told me that. That's all you notice after that. Yeah. Oh, man. And um, yeah, April 26th, which is the day Jordana Brewster was born. Uh, but she was born a year earlier. Oh, I was going to say on that day. That's crazy. Yeah, it's a little weird. But... JR, JR pouts. You could see him silently yeah. pouting at the end of that scene. Like, yeah. yeah. Like, excuse me, this is my son. Don't I get a say in this matter? <laughs> and then Bobby has to tell that guy that he's passing on the refinery because. He just can't move fast enough. And the guy's Jim like Red- Jim Redfield. Yeah. Jim Redfield. And he's like, you're crazy because like, literally like I'm selling this for super cheap. And he's like, I know, like I want to do it, but I can't because my brother's stupid. <laughs> my brother had this. Stu- uh, yeah. He's stupid. He's a dumbass. And then there's an unknown caller on line two right. that we never find out what that's all about. Just a way to end the scene. Yeah. And then we cut to the next kid eating grapes and thankfully not dying scene. Uh, and there's the, that that nurse. Where did that nurse come from? Yeah. The, the baby has like a nurse or a nanny. Um, She's wearing a full-on nur- full nurse uniform with the hat and everything like that. And it was like. Yeah. And they're at the park. So, so with uh, Pam and Ellie so that Sue Ellen can see him. And literally like she interacts with him for about five seconds until like he like gets a little cranky like she set this whole thing up she may never see him again because she may be going away to jail he starts crying and she's like uh, take him away <laughs> we but of course we don't know how much off camera interaction they'd had up to that point right so. but i'm just saying like it's just funny like this yeah. the second that kid starts to get crabby both of those parents are like bye <laughs> Go to your paid help. <laughs> That's a good point. That's why I like to think that the grapes are also a byline through the whole yeah. comparing and contrast. And she's wearing her, what I call the, uh, the paint splatter dress, the, you know, the color primary color paint yeah, splatter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know yeah. what? In my mind, I uh, know this probably isn't just me, hopefully, but I remember outfits from shows like a big, like 
that blocked my dress. I remember this is the dress that she's by the pool when she finds out everything. Like mm-hmm. I, I, I associate clothes. Think about all the other shows that you've watched. Like some, like a nine hundred two and when Brenda and Kelly were the same dress at the spring fling. Do you, yes. know, you always remember that dress with the off the collar? Uh, you know, uh-huh, uh-huh. see, and it's just big episodes of outfits. Totally. Yeah. 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 Same. Um, <laughs> Josh is like, yeah. <laughs> Sue Ellen is really just apologetic to Ellie. Like, I'm sorry I might have shot your son. I didn't really, I wish I, I hope I didn't, but I don't know. But, yeah. And then she t- how Kristen's been so wonderful and she's, she's actually so thankful. Oh yeah. She's actually going by the ranch to get uh, Sue Ellen's things later. Right. Blech. Blech. <laughs> and then she's just like, I wish I just could remember. She's like, yeah. wish. and I think in that moment when she says like, I wish I could just remember, she decides like, fuck it. I'm going to go get hypnotized. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Sue Ellen bark like a dog. Bark like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you're when I, when I snap my fingers, you're going to be a chicken. I would have loved to see, just get the out outtakes of her like getting up, <laughs> clucking her. Well, really Has anyone in this family ever seen a chicken? That's from Arrested Development. Well, I believe in this scene is when Doctor a lesser, a lesser, one of a his lesser prairie scenes. chicken. <laughs> Doctor Elby is one of, his creepy, one of his creepiest is this scene. He's like, just close your eyes and count. Them. Yeah. Oh. He keeps telling her to close her eyes. Her eyes are closed. They're closed. Count, counting back from seven. I don't know why they picked that number of seven. It was just a little know. random observation. And then the soft fleecy clouds. <laughs> yeah. I, I started going out a little bit at that point too. I was like, oh, soft fleecy clouds. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm just chilling. And then her, her heavy eyelids. Yeah. I, li- I, li- I like the way she... She when she opens, she has them like half open, like she's yeah. She's like in that catatonic, yeah, dreamlike days. Again, more more use of her eyes. It's just Linda has so perfect with the eyes. Yep. So she remembers drinking, going to Kristen's, drinking mm-hmm. more, and then leaving, and then drinking more. Girl, you know, you know what was <laughs> weird. You know what was worded weird is when he says. Tell me what happened the afternoon before Jr. was shot. Yeah, that was a weird, like, it wasn't like, so go back to this day. It was like the afternoon Jr. was shot. No, she said the afternoon before Jr. was shot was just like the oh. day before. Yeah. The way it was worded. Weird, that is a weird wording of it. it. Go back to the afternoon that Jr. was shot. like, was I got shot. my hair done. What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who wrote that script? <laughs> <laughs> um, it was written by... Lorraine Dupre. I guess that we need to blame her. <laughs> and I like so on. It, it was weird hearing her say the only people that were home were the servants. I don't know why. I, I don't know why hearing the word servants. It just. I know it sounds. It's a super bougie. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, we, know the Ter- Teresa, we know them as Teresa. We know them as Teresa and Raul. Right. You but, call them by their names, Sue Ellen, God damn it! <laughs> that the servants, and it made it sound like there were like fifteen servants running around the house. Maybe yeah. there are, and we just don't see them. I don't know. Maybe, yeah, maybe that's where Carmen is. <laughs> oh yeah, maybe. <laughs> Jesus. Um. So yeah, she goes through the whole thing, and then she comes out, and then. He's like, okay, let's go through it again. And then he's like asking her questions like, well, when did you do this? Blah, blah, blah. She goes through it. And then he's like, there's one thing you left out. Like, when did you put the gun in the closet? Yeah. She's like, oh, that's a really good question. Th- and this is Jeff Cooper auditioning for his spinoff series where he becomes a private eye. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. I didn't, I, I didn't have the gun. I know. I like, I would remember that. I switched purses. Yeah. She switched purses. So, so, so they're both like, yes, I didn't have the gun. As Celine Dion said, it's all coming back to me now. <laughs> it's all coming back. It's all coming back. She didn't have the gun. So here we have the stock footage of the, that they obviously shot in Texas of the taxi driving up to the mm-hmm. driveway. And, and he's like, Arr! I mean, he comes really close to the flower bed. Yeah. It yeah. Just bothers me. How many times do those cars stop short in the driveway and squeeze to home? Yeah. <laughs> and why is JR reading that book? Yeah, he's reading Governing Texas. Is he thinking of running for office? Mm. 
Oh, I guess if he's like, may, yeah, maybe. I want all the power. So why don't I govern Texas? And then I can become president of the United States. And then I can really do away with Cliff everything. Barnes once right. for all. <laughs> <laughs> this next scene is amazing. This scene is so This is good. my favorite part. <laughs> so good. So Sue Ellen basically is going to tell him, like, I remember there's no way I, I did it, right? And JR is so afraid of her. He's like, so afraid of her. He's just like, ah! He is struggles out of the wheelchair. To he literally his... walks to get out. <laughs> to, to like get away from her. Because she's like Jason Voorhees to him. Right. And, and she has this look of pain and concern on her face watching him struggle. Yeah. Right. She's like, I'm not going to hurt you. What are you doing? And she, she can feel the pain of him trying to walk again in that struggle, in that scene. Mm -hmm. And she wordlessly emotes again. <laughs> mm -hmm. She does. She yep. does. And she's, then, looking for, she's looking for her sister. Slinky Kristen comes right. out. I do like her outfit, though. I love this line. Well, you're a regular angel of mercy, aren't you now? <laughs> yep. So, so Ellen just, she, she's like, I was looking for you, Kristen, because I basically, like, she calls her out, like, I know you did it. You totally did it. And she's like, you're crazy. You're crazy. I didn't do it. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? I'm, I, I'm your loving sister. I'm your little sister. What, what are sisters for? What then, would you have done these last few weeks without me? And then Sue Ellen does the flashback of the whole thing. And so we as an audience get to see it too. Which Linda Gray recorded in a booth by herself somewhere. And yeah. in some ways she semi, Linda semi knew. And but I have to if, it, if it leaked out, then they could have switched the ending. So she knew, but she didn't know. Right. Yeah, but I have a question too. And this is probably okay. something stupid or I missed it. Okay, so Kristen is smart enough that when she shoots him in the office, she's wearing a black glove. When she takes the gun and puts it back into a cell and calls it, she picks up out her purse like this with her fingers. Like she's, so her fingerprints are on the gun. But she, when a she shoots it, there's gloves on. But when she takes it to go plant it back in the closet, she just picks it up with her finger. Your fingerprints are on the gun now. That's true, but it would probably it would just be like a little bit yeah, pretty partial it? print. So she, we, but she might have wiped it off too. She might have like we didn't see so, it. She put so, it in there and she wiped it off. Maybe but I was she thinking, obviously would, knew enough about prints. I was like, why would you fucking even change that though? At least like you said, right. put like a handkerchief around your and you know or something or sock. She's she, uh, right a sock. You're in a bedroom. Just grab yeah, something. Grab some of the panties and whip it up. I mean, yeah. you know, just yeah. I don't know. It bothers me. Think little things like that bother me. And this next part I, I love the line it was you Kristen who shot jr that's so good yeah Lin linda's tone and her voice as she was describing everything mm -hmm. was just so spot on perfect and i wonder if she recorded that sorry i wonder if she recorded that with like every person like it was you bobby it was okay. you whatever oh we Oh, that, that, that would be a question to write down for Linda sometime. Oh, that would be good because like that sound booth person would have known then. Right. right. It was not you, Ray, who shot JR. It was not you, Ray. <laughs> oh. She cops to it right away. Like once she they she lays out the whole thing, Kristen doesn't even pretend anymore. She's just like, oh. so okay, what are you gonna yeah, do about it? Me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you know, the JR was calling the police and Kristen drops a bombshell. I wouldn't do that if I were you, JR. Not unless you want your child born in prison. I wouldn't do that unless you want your child born in a prison. Now, wouldn't that be a scandal? Jock Ewing's grandson. Jail baby. Imagine the scandal. Jock Ewing's the baby. Fuck? Grandbaby. Right. Grandson. J jail baby. <laughs> But uh, here is the original uh, thing. Originally, apparently, according to Leonard Katzman, the pregnancy announcement was supposed to be part of the next episode. Oh, okay. When you learn who did it, you wouldn't know why until the next episode, and then you would receive the startling news. Mm. Okay. So what transpired, I would like to know, that 
cause them to bump it up. Well, they had to have some, I guess that they might've just ended that scene and then gone and then picked it up in the next episode, but maybe they wanted more of a, more of a resolution because they'd have to have a reason why she, they wouldn't immediately call the police. Yeah. Yeah. That, that could go one of two ways. You wouldn't want to call the police, but also you could leave it wondering, why don't you want to call the police? Leave the audience wondering oh, why yeah, they don't want to call like, the police. I wouldn't do that if I was you. Yeah, I don't know. That's interesting. I'm not sure. That could have been a good... All right, why wouldn't you do that? Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Because Alan Beam drugged me and took me to him. No. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite part of this scene, though, is when... Because JR is just kind of pausing like, oh, shit. Uh, I guess I better not. And then Suella tries to grab the phone. She's just like, give me that phone. I'm not going to jail for her. That phone, I'm not going to jail for her. Nobody's going to jail. I'll handle Kristen my own way. And I love that line, his last line, I'll deal with Kristen my own way. And then Kristen's just like, oh. Oh, that's oh boy, I'm, I'm, I'm really screwed. I'm and then dun, 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 freeze right here. And that, folks became the highest watched episode in television history to that time. And it's still number three to this day. That is television history for sure. Three, what what went ahead of it? MASH and what else? Um, I'm going to look because I looked it up earlier today just to make sure it was still... But clearly there is no villain in television history. JR always comes out as the top villain in television history in these surveys, still to this day. But it was uh, amazing while you're Looking that up, I'll just go back here. And um, the uh, cast actually gathered at a place called Chasen's, I believe a restaurant, to watch the episode. And they let out a loud cheer in the final seconds. It was revealed that Kristen had uh, done it. And approximately, as I said, 350 million people in over 57 countries. 57 countries. That's just mind-boggling. All right, I'm looking at Wikipedia now, which, you know, take wikipedia for what it's worth but mm -hmm. it's saying dallas is still whodunit is number two and that mash is still number one we'll do some off-screen investigating so that could some... still be the case i am not sure we'll look it up for we'll conduct further uh right. investigatory process and we had an anniversary this past week of the uh episode where pam woke up yes which I totally remember like it was yesterday. I do. Mm -hmm. And Bobby coming out of the shower the following season was on my birthday. Was it? Yeah. September 26th uh -huh. nice. of, uh, that fall. I remember being out at birthday dinner and making my parent family rush through dinner. We were at Bennigan's. Remember the restaurant Bennigan's, uh -huh. the chain? We were there and I made them rush through so we could get home in time to watch Dallas. I missed that season premiere that year and I was taping it because I had to go do something and my parents wouldn't let me get out of it. So I walked in and I set the the timer on the VCR to tape it. And when I came home, it was like 20 minutes later after it started and it wasn't recording. Oh, that and is I was just like, what? I've done no. that before. So I started I the VCR then and I didn't see the first part of that episode until the 90s when they were re-airing them. Until you saw Patrick Duffy and Linda Gray on Family Guy. And uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I remember the first time that I had to be not be home for an episode. My family decided to go on a ski weekend. And it was around the time that Nick Pierce and uh, not Nick Pierce, uh, no, it was an episode with Tommy McKay working with JR. Oh, Lord. And, and we went ski, went up to the ski place, and I could not be at home to make sure that the VCR was recording. I had to program it. And you know how it is programming something back then. Uh-huh. You never know if it's going to work. Exactly. I know. I, I got them to go out to dinner, the rest of the family to go out to dinner and leave me in the hotel room so I could watch the episode. <laughs> 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 nice. Very nice. And then one time I got in trouble for something. And they said, well, you can't watch Dallas tonight. 
That's literally uh, the worst thing they could have done mm-hmm. to you, but I bet it they worked. Said, they said you can record it, but you can't watch it when it's airing live. <laughs> He's so, like, I'll never do it again. I'm no. sorry. A little did they know I had a Sony Watchman and I was hiding in my room with the earpiece in watching <laughs> <laughs> black and white. Bad kid. <laughs> yes. All right. Back to our, our wrap up. Okay. And and so review. I'm going to give this a 4.5 bourbons and a black and white symbolic dress. I'm going to give this one. It's not my favorite episode, but it's one of my favorites. I'm going to give it a 4.85. Nice. And Sue Ellen's mugshot, because it's my favorite. Sue Ellen's mugshot. <sighs> nice. um, I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it a five. Nice. Give it a five. And I'm going to give it uh, Dr. Elby's Skeletor hair. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yes, yeah. Oh God. Uh let's see. I am gonna give it a five and a copy of Governing the State of Texas book. Ooh, nice. Good. So we're not recording next week, right? We're not yeah, we're taking next week off. Which worked out perfect because I forgot to tell you I'm going to Vegas next Thursday. So oh, okay. Um, and I'm going to North Myrtle, so okay. So we'll, I'll get lots of drunk Snapchats from Melanie on that weekend. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, we're, we're taking next week off, but we'll see you in two weeks where we'll be doing season four, episode five. So we will see you then. Bye. Bye, y'all. Y'all come back now, you hear? We'll leave the light on for you. Next on Dallas. Well, it's over. Yeah, J.R. is nearly his old self again. Oh, well, I want to kill you, J.R., to kill you! Oh, you did it, didn't you? I'm not going to have this family go through any more scandals like it's been going. I won't have that happen to my daddy and my mommy. Do you understand that? J.R. is not the president of Ewing Oil now. I am. The truth is, you like the power. It's my company. I want it back. I can't do that. What are you going to do? I'm going to bring Bobby down. I'm going to cut him out if I have to destroy Ewing Oil to do it.